Let's see. Welcome everybody. We are streaming live to YouTube and Facebook on this uh, April 15th, what used to be tax day, yeah. 2020. Um, this is day 31. 31? Deep into week five of our oh everyday gosh. 6 p.m. Pacific broadcast. And today, as you can see, and as you know, if you uh, have been following along, we are about to process acorns <laughs> into flour, make some pancakes, and other uh, uh, learning, we're just, of course. We're going to talk to you, teach you how to do it, yeah. how to do it yourself. And this is part of our uh, top 10 most important uh, local wild edible foods that we have. We're going to stay close to the house today um, as much as we can so we can broadcast to our Wolf Camp YouTube channel, hoping that will help us reach 1,000 subscribers. We need to live stream without Wi-Fi from our phones, which would be much better quality than what uh, we can do through this uh, the computer on YouTube. Um, big thanks to all of you who have subscribed to youtube.com slash Wolf Camp College in the past week and a half, two weeks now, lifting us from 400 to probably 800 subscribers by this evening. So please go in there, subscribe. Only 200 more to go in order for YouTube to enable our live streaming from the field, from our phone, so we can launch my Wolf Journey Earth Conservation course, which we're going to offer complimentarily, complimentarily. <laughs> yeah, to everyone studying from home during the social distancing era. Um, check out Wolf Camp or wolfcollege.com slash Wolf Journey Earth Conservation courses with little dashes between there. For more information on those courses, including book one, Trail of the Neighborhood Naturalist. Hopefully we'll be able to launch that by Earth Day, which is a week from today, 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So get in there and uh, just put it out to all your networks. Subscribe if they're at all interested in the outdoors uh, to the uh, Wolf Camp and the Conservation College Wolf uh, YouTube channel. So today you can follow along what we're going to do via our published just a minute ago um, <laughs> acorn blog article go to wolfcollege.com slash you know, on into the blog or slash i think it's uh red white oak acorn processing cooking flour muffin pancakes or something like that is the url and as always we hope that these daily videos inspire you to get outside and enjoy nature in your backyard uh, big shout out to all the healthcare workers and essential workers keeping people healthy sheltered and fed during this pandemic Remember, if you still have financial resources, support them and local businesses, um, maybe with takeout orders, yes, uh, PPE and other ideas. And if you benefit from this video, click on the donation link in the text uh, to keep Wolf Camp staff employed while our spring workshops are canceled. And as we wait to see if we can run summer camps this summer. All right. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Kim and we're going to launch right into ac uh, acorn oaks and acorns. And then I'm going to finish up with actually making some hang my favorite pancakes I make every day uh, with yeah. some of the flour. Stay close. Okay. Stay I'll be close. close. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, I almost melted that. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to talk about a couple different kinds of oak trees first. And we have two different kinds that you're going to generally find in this bioregion. The ones with the pointy leaves, just like this, are the red oaks. So remember, pointy are the ones that have more tannins in them, which is something that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. So pointy, think a little bit more dangerous maybe not dangerous but just a pro problematic challenging much more difficult to process much more difficult to process okay so those are the reds and then our native white gary oak i just found this one sorry i don't have a bigger sample of it but it's got lobed leaves nice and rounded undulating leaves and remember that's your difference sharp red oak undulating leaves white oak much more friendly much fewer tannins in the acorns that you want to harvest. Quicker to process. Quicker to process. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get down to it. Okay, so I have samples here of some red oaks. I'm gonna put them up close. Mm -hmm. Here's white. Okay, so and, red. And this little critter right here, we talked about yesterday, and this white. is a hazelnut. So a lot of times people see them mm -hmm. and think, oh, is that an acorn? No, it is not, this is a hazelnut. So I'll about show them that. Yesterday. Yeah, hazelnuts have that big old. They look different. And remember, everyone, the red oaks have more tannins. The white oaks have less tannins. But what I'm mostly going to be processing today are the reds because I like a challenge. So um, we harvested these red, red oak acorns last fall. And so what you do is you 
find where there's some oak trees and you head out when they're starting to drop their acorns and you are going to be collecting off of the ground because you want squirrels and the jays and things that are up in the trees that want to harvest up there to be able to get all of that can material. Can I jump in also on that or are you going to talk about on the harvesting? Oh, you can, yeah. you can jump I in. I just also want to jump in on that That's is, uh, yeah, don't even bother like climbing up in the tree or no. shaking it. Just wait for the them to fall. Then you know they're ripe. Yes. Um, then you're going to have to, as Kim's going to talk about, pick through them, make sure you can use ones. But um, also, if you're harvesting white acorn, or excuse me, white oak acorns, probably only do it one out of every three years, the years where they drop a lot of acorns. Those other two out of three years, and it's not, you know, in order. You don't, it's approximately it every by three tree. years. Yes, um, the animals that really depend on those are the deer on the white acorns, as well as the squirrels and jays and other things. And so that food source, you don't want them to starve out during the winter. So only harvest, um, unless you're in a survival situation, harvest the white acorns once every, every, when they have a big drop approximately every three years or so. Red acorns, they grow a little bit more. Red oak acorns grow more down south, uh, live oaks, um, and they also are full of forest big big forest a lot of times so maybe you don't have to worry about it quite as much okay <clears throat> so what else i was going to say was sometimes it's really fun when you're out harvesting because all of a sudden this acorn will come hurling down on you and that's what they do the jays will sit up there and they'll pull them off drop them on the ground and they'll fly down grab them and fly off with them so sometimes they can actually help with that too but if they're actively harvesting we want to try to leave that alone so that they can get the nuts that they actually worked so hard to get so you're looking at the ground and you're seeing all these acorns all around you and you think, yes, I'm going to start collecting. So you squat down and you pick up an acorn and you put it in your bag. You pick up another acorn, put it in your bag, pick up another acorn, put it in your bag, on and on and on. That is not the way to harvest acorns. The best way to harvest acorns is to pick one up, look at it, and if you see something wrong with it, if you see any mold, you see a hole, you want to put this in up really close? Mm -hmm. You see a hole oh, in it? Hole. You see, here's one with a crack on it. If you guys can see, you see a crack, you see a hole, you see mold. Take that acorn and throw it, Shock it. as hard as you can. Not where you have to pick through it again. Area, or you will pick it up 45 <laughs> different times crack, and look at it. It's a total waste of time. So be very crack. specific when you're harvesting. Pick the ones that look really good. Because if it's got a hole in it, that means that it had a little larva in it that just drilled its way out and it's letting diseases or mold and things like that in. If it's got a crack, there's going to be something wrong with it. And when you harvest that acorn, here's another one that's kind of ugly oh, yeah. to show. Um, and then, oh, there it is. So when you crack open the shell of one like that, here, you want to show this one too? You'll find something like this in the middle, and that is no good. You definitely don't want to put anything like that into the food that you're going to be eating and sharing with, with your family. So anything that's got a problem, just huck it. All right, so you've collected a whole bunch of acorns, and you bring them all home, and you're super, super busy. Don't leave them sitting in a bag because then they'll mold, and that's a really big problem. What you want to do is try to layer them, and I use paper bags, or you can actually use like a laundry hamper and layer it with paper and put all the acorns flat, like just one layer, and help dry them out. You can throw them in the freezer if you want, but it's best to just get them all set to go because you don't want to have any problems with the molding because I promise you they will. I've lost them that way from being too lazy or busy or something. Who knows? And it was, it was a really big bummer. So these in particular were harvested last fall. We dried them out. And so now I'm gonna process them or show you how to process them now. Um, so what you kind of heard me at the beginning doing was, um, well, when you first harvest them, they're kind of challenging to open up because the shells are actually really pliable. And so sometimes you're gonna to wanna to use a knife to cut them. You can use vice grips, you can use a hammer, um, you can actually use a mortar and pestle, but the problem with that is that they fly out all over the place. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is um, hit them with the vice grips to just get a little crack, then use the knife to actually cut into the pliable shell. And so now, that they're actually dry, the shells are much more firm and much easier to work with. So I just take them, hit them with a hammer, just like that, and it cracks it just enough that you can pull it apart. Now, when you've pulled it apart, you want to take a look at the outside skin of the acorn. If it looks weird in any way, like, oh, I got rid of it, but you can actually show the outside of that one and the outside of this one. So if it looks really dried and shriveling and it doesn't look nice and fluffy like the other acorns that you've been harvesting, set it aside because it's probably got something wrong with it. Anything that looks weird, 
set it aside and you can deal with that later. Um, you can cut it open and see if there's a problem. If there's not a problem, put it in. Or if your acorn has a little tiny spot on it um, that doesn't go throughout the rest of the, of the nut, you can actually just cut that out and still use the rest of the acorn as long as you get rid of the stuff that's bad. So anyway, I use a hammer and I've just been popping these guys open and they are fuzzy on the outside. These ones again are the red acorns. They've got a thick skin on the outside. Now some people just don't want to deal with the skin. I don't want to have to deal with getting rid of the skin. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't care about it. And so I just leave it on there. But if you want to get rid of it, there's a number of different ways out there that are suggested. And I've tried some of them and they don't work for me. So um, one of them is that you can boil the acorns. Oh, just pop this puppy open and look at that ickiness in there. You never really know what you're going to get. It's sort of like a really weird Easter egg hunt. Um, you get some good ones, but then ooh, there might be some rotten eggs in there. So anyway, I just open these little puppies up. And I'm going to put them in a container. Now, there's a couple of different ways. Well, let's talk tannins. Okay, so tannins are something that is actually inside of the meat of the acorn. And it's something that actually is harmful to you. It's bitter and it's astringent, which means drying or drawing. And so if you chew on some raw acorn, just put it in your mouth and give it a little bit of a nibble. It's going to make you kind of dry out and pucker up. It's not good. It's not something that's good for your body. Do you remember what it actually does? I know it can make you quite sick. Um, and I think that it has some effect on your body's ability to process protein. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not good. And so a little bit of it might be okay, but you, you just definitely don't want to. More of a medicine. When it's, uh, yeah, I guess you can astringent. find a way to use it medicinally. Yeah. So. Anyway, we need to get those tannins out of our nut meats. And the way that you do it is you use water. Now, um, oh, I didn't bring the acorn book outside. Oh, I'll bring it up. Yeah, if you want to get that. It will live forever. Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually, there's a really cool book I'm going to show you. But anyway, so you need to use water to leach out the tannins that are in your nut meats. And it actually works really, really beautifully. So depending on what you want to use your nuts for, there's a couple of different ways to do it, or else it could just be whatever way you prefer. So you can do a cold water leaching method or a hot water leaching method. The hot water method is faster, and that's the one that we're going to talk about first. Um, actually, let's show this. I'll bring it closer. Yeah. Now it's uh, backwards on the YouTube, but it's, <laughs> which is or excuse me, backward on the Facebook, which is really good quality, but uh, YouTube, that not as good quality broadcast, so we get those thousand subscribers. Um, but It Will Live Forever by Beverly Ortiz, um, and uh, she is a uh, Yosemite Indian from Cal California, that tradition, um, which was very similar to traditions around the world, great civilizations dependent on the acorn, and nowadays uh, almost nobody uh, process acorns because it's a lot of work. Unfortunate because it's also one of the most nutrition, nutrition, nutritious uh, nuts there are in existence. Right, and the book goes into great detail. It's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. It's wonderful to read, um, and I highly recommend it. Really good. Okay, so the hot leaching method. So um, when you use the hot le leaching method, it's a lot faster. And so what I do is I just take a hot pot and um, heat up my water. And then I take my nut meats and I put them in a container. Actually, I think I'm gonna grind them up first. I'll grind them yeah. up a little bit. Yep, yep. So you can grind up your nut meats in a couple of different ways. You can put them into some sort of a food processor. Oh, I didn't bring out the bottom part of this. Okay, that would be great. It's just, just clear. Oh no, it's right in front of me. Ha ha, it's right in front of me. So you can grind them up in the mortar and pestle, or you can put them into something like this. It's kind of a nut chopper. I like to do a coarse grind on my hot, leached method and the reason is that i am trying to increase the surface area on the nut meat so think about like an ice cube it's going to cool your drink down faster if you have crushed ice because it's got increased surface contact with that water so it cools down faster can you that mm -hmm. for me and this um, will leach out the tannins and this will leach out the tannins really tannins. a little bit faster now you don't have to grind them up at all you can just throw your whole nuts in there and just let them go all right but i am going to grind a little bit so here we go Okay, we're just gonna call that good. I might grind it a little bit more. You don't wanna do it so much that you have a ton of really fine powder because um, if you do, when you do your quick straining, you're gonna lose that material and you wanna keep as much of it as you possibly can. So we'll just pour these little guys in here. <coughs> Dust got me. And then you take your boiling hot water and you pour it right over. 
And you're gonna let that sit until it starts to turn kind of an orangey color. Now, what I like and to do- if you're just doing this on the stove, boil your water, turn the water off. Yeah, you can boil, turn the water, you can put your meats in it. Um, there's, there's a number of different ways you can do it. The idea is get your water as hot as you possibly can, but not boiling or too boiling, turn it off and mix it with the nut meats. Okay. And then what I like to do, if I'm making a hot leaching, I'll just put an H on it. So I know it was hot. And this is my first, I'll just put a one on here. Oh, it says hi. hi. This is my first batch of hot H1. water. Yeah. H1. Okay. So I have already done this once. So here's my batch right here and you can see, can you see I hold no, it to the sky, the color difference of the new one. And then the one that's been leaching for maybe an hour, um, which is a little bit long. It doesn't have to leach quite that long. Okay. Then I'll take this one. And so what I'm going to do then is I am just going to strain out this tannin water. You don't need to save it at all. Now, unfortunately, if I have some powdery stuff, I'm going to lose a little bit of it. Oops. I'll just put it there. Okay, so I've got my nut meats again, and then I'll just put in more water. And quite honestly, you don't have to put the number on there like I did for the hot one. I just kind of like to know how many leachings it takes for me to get it to a level where the tannins aren't getting me. Um, and so you just do this over and over with your boiling hot water. Oopsies, I like to use pink or red for hot and blue for cold. So this is number two, so our second. I don't understand why do you, uh, when, when do you do cold? Do you okay, so that? I'm gonna talk about that next. So this is hot. Um, so you will do this until you can taste a nut meat and it basically tastes pretty bland. It doesn't have that bitter, astringent, drying, drawing quality to it. You'll know. Taste one before you start. You'll know exactly what it does to you. So once again, you just go back and forth until your nut meats are ready to roll. Okay, let's talk the cold leaching method. So the reason that the cold leaching method is really, really fantastic is you can grind up your nut meats very, very small. And when you put in the cold water, um, it doesn't, so the, the starches will stay in because you're not gonna drain them out as often or um, out of the chunky material or with a, a wide sieve or filter um, and lose a lot of the starch and you're not going to basically be cooking the thing over and over and over mm -hmm. again which could help eliminate some of the fats that you want to keep because acorns are actually really nutritious they're full of really good for you fats um i don't know tons of protein lots of different things <laughs> yeah they're really good for you um so that's actually one of the reasons that we want to do it because sometimes people see this and they're like oh my gosh why do you want to go to this effort Acorns are really, really good for you. It's actually a really interesting project and it's fun and it's something that you can do with your kids or your family. It's great while you're watching TV or doing whatever. You can just crack those nuts and then process them and it tastes really, really good. If so, you don't have access in a, in a survival or traditional uh, lifestyle, if you're trying to be sustainable, you don't have and you don't have, you're not successful hunting or fishing, uh, acorns are probably very key, very key to any kind of health. You know what I'm going to do? Um, how many times do you, oh, by the way, the, well, I'm going to talk about cold first. Yeah, cold. I was going to try to do it, but I don't have any more nuts cracked to do oh, it with. Okay. So anyway, so this one is cold. So what I did was I took my nut meats and I coarse ground them just really, really quickly in this. Um, or you can kind of coarse grind them in, um, with a mortar and pestle and you don't even have to do that. But then what you do is you put it into something that's going to blend the heck out of it. And grind it up really, really small. So I dumped my water and my nut meats into my Vitamix and just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran it. And it ends up looking like a really runny, melty, coffee flavored ice cream. Actually, mm -hmm. it's really milky looking. But you can see now, if you can see that up close, that a whole bunch of the nut meats have settled out in the bottom. And if you look really close, you'll see it's chunkier on the bottom. And then the right up above the chunkiness is a layer that's super, super fine. And that is a beautiful right thing to keep. Um, up there, that could even be fine too. That's just but super floaty and fine. fine. Yeah, but super mm -hmm. fine out here. This I am going to take and I'm going to put it in my refrigerator and leave it until the next day. And what's going to happen is all of that material is going to settle out on the bottom. And then I'm just going to gently, gently, gently decant off. I guess mm -hmm. that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Just pour off that water that's on the top. And when you see that the, the tiny, tiny, silty looking little pieces of um, acorn starting to come out, stop. So did you do this today or yesterday? I did this today. So this is all settled just from this how This is many, all settled from, time? I don't know, two hours maybe. But there's a lot and more settled. Do you have to do that it. several times, the yes. cold method? Oh. Yes. Oh. So I'm, okay. um, put it in your fridge 
or no, no, no. So add, once you've let it settle out and you pour it off the water, add more water to it, shake it up, mix it all up and leave it in your fridge for another day. The next day, pour it off. That's, this is when on the cold method that I like to put C for cold, the date that I started, which is April 15th and number one, cause I've done one water bath in it. Once I drain that off, I'm gonna add another one. And this helps me keep track of how many days it was. And this could take a week or two weeks, but by the time that you're done and you taste it, it's fantastic. It's got much more of the material there. It's kept in even more of the good stuff. Um, you have to be patient. Once you're done with either one of those methods and you've got your material at the end, you need to process it right away, which means don't just stick it in a bowl in the fridge and forget about it. You either wanna dry it, um, and once you dry it, you can grind it up even more once you're done with that, or you want to freeze it to preserve it. Because like anything else that's got oils or fats in it, it can go rancid really, really quickly. So you don't want to just leave it alone. You want to complete the process. And then once you've finished, you've got beautiful, amazing acorn flower. And it's kind of a, just a, well, actually here's some of it right here. So this is kind of a lovely brown color. And I'll tell you, if you want acorn flower, it is gonna be almost way easier to just make it yourself than trying to find some place that sells it. Yeah. I used to have a, a source for times that I couldn't make it out of California and they've gone out of business. And so um, last time I needed to buy it, I ended up, don't get mad at me, <laughs> I ordered it from Poland. Yeah. Of all places, it's really popular in some of the countries over there and they process them um, as part of their food, regular food, so um, yeah. Are we ready to roll on the pancakes or you still so. have more? Okay. I'll, I'll probably think of something. Yeah, but... jump in. And as a matter of fact, um, there's been people on and off the live stream. And if there's any, uh, if you can watch and see if there's any comments. If anybody has any questions, uh, clarifications, Kim can jump in and answer your uh, questions and clarifications. We didn't put this out in advance too much at all. So we don't expect too many people watching live. But we are going to post this, of course, to the Wolf College website. Uh, so you can watch this over time. We will also post it and put it on our new blog post. Uh, that describes all of this in some more detail. Uh, at least introduces it, has links to various things. So I make pancakes every morning. I'm gluten free. I really need to have uh, certain kinds. Now you can just use this acorn flour, uh, put what you normally would uh, make pancakes uh, with it. I'm going to put in my wet stuff separately as normal. And I'll show you what else I do. Um, so there's a egg from the ladies. Oh, can I Everybody. mention that really fast? Yeah, sure. So if you want to support your local businesses, just remember you can get beautiful eggs from your neighbors. Um, they have chickens. Check these out. These are from my ladies, and they're eight and nine years old, still laying. But definitely support your neighbors. Just put something out on a next door site or a local group and find people who have chickens and, and help them out. Now, yesterday in the live broadcast, we made hazelnut uh, milk, which is still, I've got about half of it left. I dr drank quite a bit. But uh, I'm going to... Uh, have that be the milk that we're putting in there. You could just do water, obviously, uh, but it's nice to have something milky. Now, if you really want to have them start fluffing up more, of course, you need the egg. You need a little bit of dairy if you want. I'm gonna, I'm not dairy free, so I'm gonna add a little half and half just to make sure it gets all fluffy. Now, if you want it to um, not be a crepe, crepes are flat. If you want it to be fluffy, of course, you want to add your baking powder, um, your normal, whatever, just some flour, normal flour to get it to fluff up more. Um, and, uh, you know, you can use Bob's Red Mills, various gluten-free things if you want. Uh, now, this is my pancake mix I make up. I do this about once a month, so I have plenty for the month. And uh, this already has some baking powder and some of the different kinds of flours I like to add. And so I'm just going to mix um, a little. I'm not going to open up this other acorn. This is the stuff from Poland, isn't it? Yep, sure yeah. is. We haven't even really used any of it yet because it's so precious. <laughs> um, but here we're going to use some of the old acorn flour that we uh, made. We're also going to, I'm going to use some of my current um, pancake mix. So you want to make sure that you don't just use 100% acorn flour to be like using 100% well, almond flour? you could. I mean, you could, but it would be incredibly yeah. dense and flat. But see, if you mix it with some of your other flour, either at least 50-50, um, then it'll have the ability to cook up. 
in a way that you're used to. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the oil to cook on, now you could try to do this um, in a survival situation on right onto the coals, which is, um, you know, if you've been to any camp of any kind, especially ours, we try to do that <laughs> for fun on making pancakes. Um, but, oops, I put a little too much stuff in, so I'm going to add some more. Good, hazelnut milk, because I do want to use this up. And then, um, is it on? No. I'll turn it on right the now. oils that you want to use, of course, for any kind of pancake, is stuff that doesn't um, burn at very low heat. Butter kind of burns a little heat; doesn't work quite as well. Of course, bacon grease is <laughs> perfect <laughs> if you uh, want to make anything like pancakes. Um, if you want to use a veggie oil, one of the few really good uses for coconut oil in cooking and frying uh, is, or should I say, frying is making pancakes. Um, because it's just, yeah, gives it that tropical pancake flavor in the morning is really great. All right, so that's pretty much it. Just need to heat it up, fry it up, eat it. Oh, did I get in the way? And, you're oh. and this, the acorn is such a good tasting flour, you really don't even need a sweetener. Uh, of course, you can mix in. Oh, I should bring out some of our strawberries. Some oh, you're gonna add. Oh, I don't know if I want to add vanilla. Okay. Yeah, because acorn's so nice and That's flavorful. That's true. It is really, really, really nutty and sweet. Amazing. It's amazing that when you taste it after you've leached it to make sure that it doesn't have the tannins in it anymore, it tastes kind of bland. But once you cook it, for some reason, it just brings all this flavor, this depth of flavor. It's really, really wonderful. Well, we're 27 minutes in. We like to go 30 minutes. We're gonna when we start unveiling the Wolf Journey Earth Conservation Course, we're gonna try to do 20 minutes because that's the ideal time to be outside uh, to let yourself settle down. And the adrenaline, kind of the major part of the adrenaline, kind of flesh out a little, uh, and for nature to go back to normal. 20 minutes is an amazing time period. Um, Kimber, if you want to add any last things, you can do that. I'm gonna um, finish up with. Uh, I'm going to save my songs for the wolf journey, but I already did concerts over the weekend. If you want to scroll back over to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I played this song uh, called The Man Who Planted Trees. It's mm -hmm. also called the Acorn Song by one of my best friends who passed away last year, Leslie Lightfall. And so we'll close by uh, singing that. And Kim, you can just turn off the live stream uh, in there because they can go back and listen to uh, that podcast. Oh, you're going to turn it off that, right now? Yeah, any last things you want to mention? Just do it. Just go out and get some acorns when they come out this fall. It's wonderful. And actually, as you're walking around, pay attention to where the oak trees are because we have them all around our neighborhood and we didn't even have any idea we had quite as many as we do. So just keep your eyes out. When you see an oak tree, think, ah, oh, that's when I'm going to harvest them. Or ask that neighbor if they don't, wouldn't mind if you went in and bought some. Oh, wow, yeah. It must have been in the sun. It's been really, we don't know how to handle this kind of sun in, in the spring normally. It's, it's so nice. hot. And we're so thankful. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. There was no man who went to live in the desert. Give it a, a minute. Give it a minute? Out. Okay, great. Planted acorns one by one with great effort. He poked holes in the ground and he pushed the seeds down and he watered them all by hand. In his mind, you can see the new green tree is not in it. For he held a vision of the forest wild. He held a vision of the way that things could be. He held a vision. It's a gift for you and me. It's a gift of a dream turned into reality. Right. Thanks, everybody. Be well. We see you tomorrow. Great effort.